Hey you, yes you, get your mortal on. Welcome back to Airbros Review SA. Today we've got the Kroll Mortal and uh, you also get the Mortal X which is the longer one but we've got the Mortal which is the compact version. So upon unboxing this beautiful air gun it comes in a box all right not in a hard carry case. Um, you guys need to look around all the crawls you know when you do when I do videos and so on some other manufacturers would opt to get them in a hard carry case and 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 so it will be different cases compared to what they chose. So the way we chose it now is just in a box because then it makes the price cheaper here in South Africa. So just check it that. Um, yeah, so let's open it up and let's start seeing what's inside. So it is like in a box, so it's got thin things to cover it up. But yeah, their packaging is quite good when they come overseas and so on. But um, so it gets protected, so no problem with that. So you do get your single shot loader, like as normal, you get your full probe, like, well, quick coupler, not full probe, look at that. So just quick couple. So that's quite nice. I like it that the people put quick couplers. The full probes must be outdated. I don't like them. But anyway, you get a full grip like this that you can put on the front of the air gun. I'll show you now how it would look. But let's quickly just unbox it here and take it out. So another thing, you also get two magazines. Look at that, guys. And it's right here on the inside. So you've got a place to keep them which is quite nice, look at that, look at that, I like that, so you can just keep them there all loaded so when you want to go shoot, you know, it's simple, just take out, put and shoot, just make it the ease of shooting, so this is the stock, have a look, you can put it on the Picatinny rail here, you can put it there, it depends on where you want it, you know, so you can have a foregrip just to hold it and shoot out of the hand, but if you're going to use like a bipod on the table, he has a Picatinny rail right there in the front, um, look at it guys, Pretty nice and neat. It looks something way different. It almost looks like a shotgun if you walk without a scope, you know. People are going to be like, look at that pump action. No, it's not. It's a PCP. So it is a bolt action PCP, like side lever by Athlon. Um, it's got a new design of it. Look at it. It's like got a new style of it. It looks pretty decent. I like it. Something new. Your safety now is like a thumb safety right here on the side. Right, everything is close by. You got your power wheel adjuster right here. So that is for your transfer port. So you can see plus and minus. So you can go up in power or down in power. You got also a folding stock. So if you push this thing in, you can even have it in the truck and then quickly take shots close by, you know, in close quarters. Um, if you're gonna then want to shoot on the bench and so on, you can obviously make it longer. You can even have this thing to whatever size you need so if it is like your little child shooting you can actually change this up for them so that they can have reach which is quite a nice thing then it's got an adjustable cheek piece up and down your butt pad is rubber at the back here you can not adjust that up and down so that's fixed um, it's got a place where you can put on a sling so in the sense you put your sling right here and then on your picatinny there you go just put it on your back wherever front doesn't matter whatever suits your needs uh, it looks pretty cool here on the front it almost looks like an m-lock it is plastic guys it's not aluminium so it doesn't add too much weight oh yeah the overall weight on this one is going to be 3.51 kgs so it's 3.51 kgs so it's not that it doesn't feel that heavy it sounds heavy but it's not that heavy Maybe I've just got strong arms here. <laughs> but anyway, looking at the total length of this rifle, it's 870 millimeters. All right, from there to there, 870. Then the barrel length, all right, it's 407 millimeters. So let's see what speeds we can get out of them. Maybe 800 feet per second with 18 grain? We'll see. We'll see, and then see the groupings at 50 meters. And then it's got a 200cc bottle right here, a tube version. Well, not a bottle, but a tube version. So reckon they reckon about 60 shots per full. We'll see about that. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out and let's see how this thing performs down at 50 meters. Um, I think it's gonna do pretty great. 
um, just check yeah I just dropped my mag out there just knocked it out so guys just watch out for that so you don't lose your mag on the range or out hunting so just note that uh, it's got a nice rubber grip like I always said I like that feel um, so it's not too cheapy designed you know what I'm saying so it's got a nice rubber grip that's what I like about these air guns then it's got adjustable trigger so this trigger it's like a match style safety trigger and, and all those things these triggers you're allowed to change your blade left or right up and down you know however the preference will be for your trigger pull so you can adjust that um, I don't see a place where you can adjust your trigger shear setting on the crawl shadow you've got it in the bottom there where you can just turn it this one you're probably gonna have to remove the rail to get to it and adjust it so it is adjustable but not just with ease so yeah um, uh, also lastly this is a shrouded barrel but it's not silenced here on the front so it's gonna be quite loud if you don't shoot with a silencer so the other thing is what I've noticed guys these guys put anodizing on these things I don't know why but it seems like they've done it thicker I don't know if you can get thicknesses of, of anodizing, but this, when you put on a half inch UNF thread, some of them tend to don't go. You know, they don't want to go on. So just make sure that you chase it with a dye nut or something just to clean that little excess off, and then you can put on a silencer. But not yet, that's not it. There's also another go with this. So if you see, it's got like a little step there. So just make sure if you buy a silencer from us, let us recess that thing so that it will fit all the way flush against the bottom here. If you don't do that and it sits flush there, what in an aids it does is when you put on that silencer, it pulls it a little bit skew. You can't see it with the eye, but it does. Then you get clippings. So make sure you get a silencer that goes flush against it so that you won't have that problem downrange, you know? You guys, obviously we need those silencers on these things if you want to be super quiet. And then, this is also another improvement that I like. No more full probe. The full probes always charred O-rings. Put the quick couplers like this. That's perfect. I mean, just a nice little cap over it. Perfect. That's what you need, guys. I love it. I like that. So, yeah. Let's stop talking. Let's shoot it at 50 meters and see what we can come up with. See now. All right. So, we're going to shoot at 50 meters. I'm choosing the... 18.13 JSBs and then I'm so we're gonna try our own 18 grains that I've uh, got here in this tin here of our slugs, Thor slugs. We'll try a five shot grouping of each and check how it goes down range. Um, I just want to mention to all the newbies out there, um, please when you shoot these air guns fill them up to 200 bar, no more than 200 because it's got a safety burst disc otherwise then it will burst through the disc so it's a safety burst disc that's why it's called that. Then, do not shoot it below 100 bar, because then you're going to damage your main valve. So please don't do that. So, anyway, let's get on to it. Let's do a five-shot grouping, and uh, let's check what it can do. And remember, I said they, uh, they would normally say it gets about 50 shots um, per full, uh, about 60. I think that's on low power, which means you turn this, like... Um, screw down you know transfer port screw and uh, but yeah otherwise I only get about three magazines which is times 12 you know um, yeah you get two magazines of 12 rounds so let's just check how this one performs with 18 grain JSBs and by the way I just want to say I put on this discovery um, 3 to 18 by 50 SFIR scope First focal plane, pretty nice and neat. More or less, it's flipping fantastic. So that one didn't read on the crony. Let me just move the crony over. And uh, let's go for it, guys. Let's see if it reads. Ah, my batteries are going flat. Come on. But anyway, let's just go ahead. That was three shots. Wow. That is pretty decent, guys. Look at that. 798. <laughs> that thing is lying. This thing's batteries are flat. Let me just um, change those batteries and we'll do it on the 18 grains of the Thors and we'll check how that performs. So let's do that. Alrighty, 
So let's go on to the left hand side. I've got the tools in here, 18 grain slugs. Let's see how they do. 700, Eight hundred fourteen. Eight hundred seven. Seven hundred ninety-one. All right, so let's go down range and let's see how those eighteen grains did there, and um, it looks pretty decent. And yeah, I'm pretty keen to see what it does. I've done the. Uh, Five shot groupings of both, um, of the 18 grains of the normal 18.13s, which this barrel prefers. Um, the other 18 grains, I haven't even really tried them out. I know with the 580 barrels, they work pretty decent. But as you can see now, with this 407 millimeter one, it don't like them. But I shot them. So yeah, let's go check down range and let's see how it looks. All right, guys, we're down here at 50 meters. Have a look at that. That was my first groupings that I done with 18.13s. Look at that. That's five shot grouping, which I can cover with my thumb. Very, very nice. Then, this is what I wanted to show you guys, okay? Have a look at these shots here with those slugs, all right? They perform well in one gun, but in another gun, same manufacturer, they don't perform well. So this is what I want to show you. This... You can get it tighter with any other slug. Slugs are very specific things that you need to shoot out out of a certain air gun. Meaning barrel twist rate and so on needs to match the length of slug. You know, that's how I see it. S to get it to match perfectly with the spin and the twist rate to go together with its ballistic arc and coefficient that will help it out to be on the dot. Meaning also have a look at the size of it. That's why you get 218s, 216s, um, you name it, you know, 217. That's the diameter of the slug. Um, all barrels aren't exactly, exactly the same, you know. It's like a fingerprint. They're all a little bit different, you know. They've been made in the same factory. But yet again, look what it does. I mean, on the other gun, on the Shadow, it performed pretty decent, you know. It was getting this size grouping at 50. Now I look at this one, it's throwing them all over because of this twist rate and the length of the barrel also played a big role. And it could also be your choke in the front, that could also be a difference in, in accuracy as well. That's why they've got, like I said, different diameters like 216s, 217s, 218s, and sometimes 219s. So, yeah, you have to try it in your own air gun. A lot of guys ask me. What's the preferred slug? We can give you a ballpark figure to try out and you can work it out from there onwards, you know? Um, because, I mean, there's 217s, 216s, guys, if, <laughs> there's so many 21s and what, what, what. You know what? Just go and shoot the gun and see which one yours prefers. You will find that slug if you've got, well, firstly, money to buy all those air gun slugs, but H&N makes a nice test pack kit. Everybody should catch up and... Um, do that so you don't have to just buy that massive turn of 200 and let's say it doesn't work you know just just my thoughts but all right like i was mentioning different types of weights and sizes and slugs and so on um just want to mention also like these new slugs that we got here these little ones right there i don't know if you can see that quite well but anyway these ones are called the gmax series slugs so they come in this nice little tub. If you can have a look at that, it says 218. So that is the diameter size. You get a little target inside and then obviously this little spongy on top just to keep it all safe. And then a little plug on the top just to keep it there. So look at that, that's quite nice. So these G Max series, you get 150 pieces in one, and the price that you can pay for these versus all the other slugs is, it's, it's like half the price. I mean, you know, it's worth a try. They've got all the shapes and sizes, and from the 22 grains all the way up to the, I think it's 36 grains, you guys can come and try them out, and uh, they all got 216s, 217s, and 218s of each um, weight. 
So this is like the 24 grains. I mean, we've even got the 23 grains that look like the normal slugs. So we've got a whole lot of them. Um, look at number six. This one is a 24 grain and this is a 26.216. Uh, Have a look at that. That's a nice size. It's also, it's, a, it's not a hollow point. It is a solid piece. So the hollow points are generally, you're going to look for like your pigeons and so on. You know, and your higher axes like your dassies here yeah, down in South Africa. Um, if you want to hunt bigger game, I would rather suggest because you're hunting with a with an air gun. You know, this is my take, like a slug like that with no hollow point. I mean, you don't want it to actually impact um, or open up on impact. You understand? Because it needs to still break the bone. So when this thing hits the bone, then it only mushrooms, which is quite good. You know. I think I've got a little thing going on there um, because I've noticed um, when we've been hunting and so on and we use these hollow points you know sometimes when we've checked is when it hits the the skin because I mean the animal's skin is quite tough it, it expands so much that it doesn't it, it cracks the bone it doesn't go right through you know so you need to choose soft bones or you need to get slugs that are super hard to, to go through so um, yeah, when we've tried these normal ones with no hollow point, they actually penetrate quite well. And then when you do retrieve these, they, you know, when they hit the bone, they do open up, you know, so they do mushroom when they hit the bone. So, I mean, in a sense, if you want to do the hunting, I would rather use that. And if you want to shoot birds and so on, you'll choose the one with the hollow point, you know, because you don't want over penetration, you know, uh, depending on which places you want to shoot. So some guys don't have the opportunities to shoot on farms and so on here in South Africa. And um, the guys are normally doing it in the yard, which I don't condemn, but I mean, you know, they are doing it because uh, we've got pest birds around here and they just take them out. I mean. Now imagine you take a 36 grain slug and that thing goes through and it lands somewhere else where it's not supposed to. That ain't a good thing. You know, so that's why I go lighter with a big hollow point so when it hits something, it mushrooms, dumps all its energy and you're fine. So yeah, that's my take on the slugs and um, yeah, come have a look at pillarguns.com. We've got all these GMAX um, Defense Rifle Series um, slugs, all of them in all the calibers. Uh, well, in the calibers now, in the 177, we've got two, and then in the 22, we've got, wow, like I said, from 22 up to 36 or 32 grains, round about there. No, don't quote me on that, but yeah, we've got it. Go check on our website, we've got it there. All right, guys, um, yeah, go check out GMAX Slug, go try them out in your air gun, see which one works. We've got a ton of these, so go try them out, and they're pretty well worth the, the money. Okay, yeah. guys, I'm sitting here. Looking at this round magazine, 12 shots. Oh well, let's cut to the chase. Have a look at this. Do you know what is in this box? I'm sure you guys know. Look at this. So what? A 26 round magazine in .22. Look at that. Thank you Peter Rademan for getting this uh, sorted there at Kroll and Kroll guys well done on a flipping fantastic job. So this is a flipping nice bloody magazine. If you guys could have a look at it there it's got a little rotary, uh, rotisserie knob there that you can set it. Um, this is a from the left hand side to the right hand side a magazine that you can install. So just look if you don't have a massive power wheel or a parallax wheel on that side then it won't work. Just take off your parallax wheel. But have a look at the size of this thing. It's like a, a fridge, you know? Look at that door. I mean, look at that door. That, that's pretty cool. Um, it's got magnets on the inside there, keeping it closed, which is pretty cool. I like that. See, there's two magazines, and it's pretty nice to use. So look at that. That almost looks like a tractor tracks. So this little knob at the back, yeah, in a sense, what you'll do is you'll turn it in a circle. So what I've checked is, right, if you do that, and then you, you know, you can either use the call it this door to wind it up I wouldn't say it would be easy like that but maybe it will break so the easiest way is to turn it put your finger on the top of this little wheel hold it down go all the way until you see that stopper there you see that stopper how it's following there go all the way to the one side boom then you'll see it will have a hole right through there put in your first pellet like I'm gonna do now which is the 18 grains check it out there Check it there, just make sure it's tensioned and it's lining up. All you do is take it with one finger, 
and then you let it go. It catches it. Now you just fill the rest. How nice and simple is that? 26 round magazine, guys. Wow, wow, wow. This is fantastic. Very easy to use. Um, dropping the pellets like it's like it's hot, you know. Look at that. Pretty simple. Really, really like it. Each and every single one that's going in fits pretty well and neat. No problems whatsoever. Look at that. 26 round magazine, guys. Come on. Can you believe that? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Let's shoot and let's see how it perf performed. So yeah, only at pelagans.com, guys. Put it in, make sure it's in. Forward, and then you can fire. Oh no, goodness, guys, look at that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have so many shots, guys. Really, look at that, look at this. Okay, although it sticks out there like a sore thumb, but it's gonna have plenty shots, guys. Look at that. You know what's also nice about this? Now you can print your turret stickers, you know, um, with your holdovers and you can put it over here. So, in a sense, this is also like you can put um, your holdovers on there, you know, your reticle and everything on your scope. So, when you shoot like when you're a left, well, right handed shooter like I am, and you've got this side, you can quickly have a reference and you know where to hold over. I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty naive. That's neat. I love it. That's pretty neat. Love it, love it, love it. I was pretty impressed with this mortal. Um, very, very nice to shoot. It's nice to pick up and hold and, you know, pointable. It's very, very lacquer. Guys, it's got a Picatinny rail on the top which you can mount on and I really like this Picatinny rails. I mean, it's just the ease of just tightening these things down and you can have a blast with these air guns. It depends on what scopes you want to put on. I mean, you can, like this one, it's pretty decent. I like it because you can see quite <laughs> you know, close, you bring the target quite close because it's first focal plane. Your holdovers don't change. Ah, oh, I love it. Um, yeah, and um, I shot with it today. I really enjoyed it. Um, the trigger pull, it's quite light and everything, but it's very loud without the silencer. So if you're going to shoot, do the backyard plinking, don't do that without a silencer. I'll put up here now playing. So you can see the decibel meter um, of it going without the silencer. It's going to be quite loud. And then I'll install the silencer and then also play the decimal readings with that. So you guys can check that out. So, but yeah, uh, final thoughts. I really enjoyed it. Um, these are the air guns that we don't get sponsored. We buy them ourselves because um, we know crawl. We tried and tested them and they do pretty well. I mean, as you can see, just plug and play, just sight in your scope and look at the accuracy you can get out of it. <laughs> it's a no-brainer, guys, and obviously the price. And parts, look at that, off the sales, perfect. Really love it. And guys, yeah, if you guys really love this video, please like, share and subscribe. And we've got plenty more to come. I mean, there's so many air guns lined up coming onto this channel. So we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.